Hello, welcome to Trinity Temple Love to Life broadcast. I'm Brenda. And I'm Miss Tommy. And we're here to tell you about some upcoming events. Hey, Tracy. How are you? I'm doing well, Tamiko. How are you doing? I am doing phenomenal. Exactly. I know you are. You look phenomenal. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, yes, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the life groups. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the life groups. Yes, because Trinity Temple is so amazing and we reach out to the community at all times. Mm -hmm. We have some phenomenal people right here at Trinity Temple. Did you know yes, that? Yes, I know yes. you do because you're a part of the life group. So we're here today to talk about the Trinity Temple Church of God in Christ life groups. We're doing life together. You know that living room experience that we had growing up? We just sit around and chat and do life together. Yes. We have some interesting and exciting life groups going on virtually. Can I tell you, Tamiko, it's not just for members. No, it's for anyone that can join a life group. That means you can invite your cousin all the way in California, even relatives that you may have in Canada or abroad. All they do is to join and register right on our website. Did you know wow. that? Yes. That's amazing. So will you do me a favor and visit www.trinitytemple.org. Click on the menu button and look for life groups. And there you will find all of these amazing facilitators such as yourself, right? With the naturally beautiful. Yes. So join us. Don't forget, click on that register button. Let's do life together. Hello there, Trinity Temple family and friends. We have some exciting things going on right here at Trinity Temple campus. May is Women's Month, and the theme for the Women's Month is Divine Choices. Not only is May Women's Month, and the theme is Divine Choices. We have an amazing First Lady who is over the Women's Department, Supervisor Latanya Stevens. Yes, so we do have some really good events coming up. You, they don't want to miss it. They don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it, women. Yes. So the first thing we have coming up is our Beautifully Me High Tea event, which is happening on Saturday, May 28th at 3 p.m. Tickets are $20 for adults and $10 for children 12 and under. It includes food, a fashion show, skits, and many prizes and more. We're looking for actors and models. If you've been wanting to get your act on, now is the time. Also, something else amazing is going on in May. Should I tell them? Yeah. Okay, let's tell them. We're featuring female authors of Trinity Temple as well. See, we got some phenomenal women here. And because we as women are so phenomenal and so fabulous, we're celebrating Mother's Day on Sunday, May 8th. Will you come and celebrate with us? Yes. Bring your mom. Bring your wife. Bring your sister. Bring your aunt. Yes. And not only that, we know we got some savvy, creative women and young adult women. So will you follow us on Facebook? Do you want more information about this amazing department? If you do, can you email us at info at trinitytemple.org? And we would love to hear from you if you want some amazing information about the women's department. I want to see you in May. God bless. Save the date. June 18th at 12 p.m. as we celebrate our very own Pastor Benjamin Stevens III and his elevation to jurisdictional bishop. Also, who will be in the house? Our very own, our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shear, will be delivering the word. Come out, come all. Hello, Trinity Temple. I'm Rev. Kev, and this is Elder Tate. Elder Tate is here to just give a few announcements for our men's weekend, our men's month, starting in June. Can you tell us a little highlights here? Yeah, we've got an exciting men's month plan for the month of June. We've got some activities that we need to really talk about and get everybody on the same page. So because of that, we need all men to attend a meeting with us directly after service, third Sunday, May the 15th. Not only do we want men there, but men, we need your help as well. We need you to bring your sons. We want our young men to be involved in our men's month in the wonderful month of June. It's gonna be great. I know it's gonna be great. Make sure you bring your sons, bring your uncles, bring your grandfathers. Come on, let's get together.
Those were your announcements. You said I'm special. Special. You need you chosen. Hi, I think that if I had to tell my younger self uh, something or give some advice, I think first of all I would say make sure that you just be yourself. Be yourself. Don't compare your gifts to others. Don't um, look for approval or validation from anyone else. Don't allow um, what others say to keep you in fear of sharing your gifts, but just be yourself. And and that is the most important thing because who God made you and created you to be is unique, is special, and is beautiful just the way he created you. Um, the other thing I would say is give yourself some grace. You know, you're not going to always do things perfectly. God gives us amazing grace. And so I thank him for that. But we also have to give ourselves some slack. You're not going to do everything perfect. And um, even when you feel like you make mistakes or things or you failed with something, it's not really failing because you learn from those things. You learn to get better. You learn not to do those things. And you eventually, then you can be successful in whatever you do so I would say give yourself some grace and just also um, I would say make sure to um, love love yourself because first of all God said you have to love yourself if you're gonna love somebody else and so when you love God first and then you love yourself then it makes it even that more easier to love someone else. So that's the main thing that I would say is to just be yourself the way God created you. Um, give yourself some grace and then love yourself and um, love others. So that's my what I would say to my younger self to remind my younger self to um, be myself because I think a lot of times I allow the fear or the words of other people to keep me from sharing the gifts that God had given me. And so I think that's what I would say to my younger self, most of all, to just be be yourself and don't be fearful to be yourself. I want to know God. I'm ready to get connected. I want to discover my purpose. I'm ready to make a difference. Grace and peace, my brothers and my sisters, and what a joy it is for us to be together again. Today we celebrate all of the feminine warriors around the world and especially in our community. We celebrate women. We celebrate young girls and young adult ladies. We want you to know that you are loved. Today is a very special day around the world. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to honor all of the women who have been blessed to birth children, even those that are surrogate moms and god moms. We celebrate you as well. I celebrate my mother, Rita Stevens, there in Inglewood, California. I want you to know today is a very, very special day. I'm believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders on Mother's Day. So I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, get ready to enjoy what God is about to do in the atmosphere as we go higher in his word and as we go stronger in worship. Let's hear what God has to say to his church. Bring a word in this due season, oh God. I thank you that it will allow chains to be broken and lives to be changed and rearranged in the mighty name of Jesus. God, have your way. Save, deliver, and set free. Heal mending broken hearts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Only you can touch, only you can heal, and only you can deliver. God, we honor the women of today. Oh God, we ask that you would continue to bless them. Continue to use them for your glory, oh God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for our first lady. Continue to endow her with your wisdom, your knowledge, and most of all, your understanding, oh God. Lord, we honor all all the mothers across the globe on today. Every mother, every grandmother, every godmother, every sister, every aunt. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you. And Lord, we say a special prayer for those whose mother is no longer with us. God, I pray that you would comfort them like only you can, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would continue to anoint them like only you can, oh God. Lord, I pray that they would be encouraged on this morning and not discouraged, oh God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. We thank you for the sacrifice of a mother. We thank you for the sacrifice of praise, oh God. We thank you, oh God. 
should be like oh God I thank you for stepping in I thank you for filling in the gap I know what you can do I know what you can do I've seen you do it God I'm not supposed to be standing here because I lost my mother at 15 and I tried to commit suicide but mercy said no hallelujah He's no respecter of person. What he has done for me, he will do for each and every one of you. So raise your hands and bless the Lord. Give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because truly, he is worthy, so worthy, so worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. 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 If y'all can just do what she said. Will you open up your mouth and give God a praise? There should be a sound in the earth today. Because for one, it's Mother's Day. And if you are a mother, you have something to give God praise for. Your kids are okay. Your grandkids are okay. You in your right mind. And to God be the glory. Because we didn't have to be here today. But he saw fit for us to come together and worship him. So come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody got a praise in their heart today? Glory, glory, glory. Come on, clap your hands. There is a praise, there is a praise in my heart. And I gotta get it out if I try. If I try to contain it, it will just take over me. For all that you've done, for all that you've done, and all that you are, you're the righteous one, the living God. So with my hands of praise, I will lift my voice and I will say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your Father. Hallelujah to you, Lord. There is a praise. There is a praise in my heart. And I gotta get it out If I try If I try to contain it It would just take over me For all that you've done For all that you've done And all that you are You're the righteous one The living God So with my hands up raised I will lift my voice And I will say Hallelujah 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 to Hallelujah. 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 To oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 To your Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To you go. Forever is strong. Forever is strong. You have broken. Hallelujah. 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 And yoke. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, especially for the promises you've given unto me. So with my hands up raised, I will lift my voice and I will say hallelujah, hallelujah to your father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Forever 
every stronghold, for every stronghold, you have broken. Hallelujah. 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 You destroy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The promises you give are not to me. So with my hands, hands I will lift my voice, voice and I will say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah to you, Father. Oh, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah to you, Father. Oh, But can you take about 30 seconds and just go find about five people and just testify. Tell them God's been good to me. Come on, tell them God's been good to me. That's it. Go find somebody else and tell them God's been good. Come on, tell them God's been good. Come on, there's somebody else that came to lift him up. Come 
Come on, somebody came to lift him up. Now come on, put those hands together. Come on, everybody clap your Give me one more round of that. Oh, Lord, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will sing. I will sing oh, yes, we will. I will, we I will. will. Come on, give God a praise this morning. Come on, give him glory this morning. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, if God's been good to you, don't get proud now. Don't get quiet now. Somebody ought to lift him up this morning. Come on, somebody ought to give him glory this morning. Come on, I dare you to praise God in your kitchen this morning. Come on, give him glory in the living room this morning. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his mercy and do it forever. I will bless the Lord at all times and praises. Oh, his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Now, before you take your seat, clap your hands and give him some glory. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. He has done great things for me. I just want to know how many people here in the house of the Lord that would say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I don't know where I would be. He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms. I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus just look at somebody and tell them, you're looking at a miracle. You're looking at a miracle. Amen. I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. He's brought us a mighty long way. So for that, we give God praise. Happy Mother's Day to all of the women of the Lord in the house. Amen. Can I have all of the women please stand? All of the mothers stand. If you are a mother, come on, come on, come on. Now, if you're sitting next to somebody that's standing, will you help me celebrate all of these amazing women of God? Come on now, if you a mommy, if you a god mommy, you a grandmommy, come on, stand up. Come on, help me celebrate mothers. Come on. We celebrate all of you women of God. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for you queens on today. Because without you queens, there would not be kings. And I just thank God that God puts great men inside of great women. And great women produce great men and great women. And so I honor the Lord for mothers on today, and I celebrate you. Amen. We cannot replace you, so we celebrate you. We cannot deny you. We celebrate you. I say it all the time. God made a woman. He made the best thing in the world. I think I can get some tenor, some baritone, amen. Anything better than a woman, brothers, God kept it. Y'all ain't going to help me this morning. I said all the time, you all are the crescendo of creation. Amen. Amen. I bow down. I give all reverence and respect. I'll never forget eight years ago when Lady uh, Stevens, Lady Latanya, was having little Ben. And, uh, you know, she was on that table and uh, she had already gone into labor, dilated. Everything was getting ready to happen. And uh, they told her to push. And she looked around. She didn't say nothing. She bowed her head and she after that, I was like, she's the queen to be. <laughs> After I saw all that, I was like, amen, amen. You 
you sisters are no joke. You ladies are amazing. So I thank God for you. Amen. Brothers, help me. Stand up your feet, men, and let's give these women a standing ovation. Come on. Let's celebrate. Amen. Let's celebrate. Just turn. Face a sister and just celebrate her. Amen. I celebrate her. I celebrate all of you ladies on today. Thank you so much, men. Thank you for honoring these ladies. I celebrate. I celebrate my lovely wife. Amen. She's working and she's moving around somewhere. Where is Lady Latanya? Where are you, sweetie? She's a, she working somewhere. All right. Help me celebrate our first lady on this morning. Love her so much. Thank God she gave me my handsome son who I love so much. I want to celebrate, amen, the church mother, our church mother, the one and only Mother Ethel Huntley. Mom, will you stand? Come on, help me celebrate Mother Ethel Huntley, amen, the greatest church mother, amen, on this side of glory. We honor the Lord for you, Mother Huntley. After service, I got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. I got a blessing with your name on it. I thank God for our church mother. Amen. They don't make them like they used to. Amen. So anytime you get a good church mother that will pray for you and come to the hospital, show up at the funeral services and will love on you and still tell you, I miss you. Where you been? Amen. You have a good church mother. And Trinity Temple, we are blessed uh, to have an amazing church mother. I celebrate my mother. Amen. Rita Stevens, she's in Nashville on today with my sister. But I honor the lady that gave me birth. And I thank God for her so much. And at the same time, we honor the uh, matriarch of Trinity Temple. She's gone on to be with the Lord, but I would be remiss if I didn't honor the woman of God who I love so much and I cherish her. She's gone on to heaven, but I believe she's smiling on today with a big hat. Will you help me celebrate the life and the legacy of Mother Mary Lee Henderson? Come on. Tr come on, Trinity. Help me celebrate her life. Amen. I love her. I love her. Her, her daughters are here today. Our family's here today, grandchildren. But we honor Mother and we thank God for Mother Mary Lee Henderson. Amen. And I thank God for all of the mothers that are here in the house of the Lord today. We have gifts uh, for every mother that has come today. And at the end, our children's ministry wants to tell mommy that we love you, mommy, so much. And so on your way to brunch, amen, our children's ministry is going to bless you. We have a muffin for mom. And so our children wanted to mo let mommy know that we love mommy today. And so this is a very, very special Mother's Day. So I want to say happy Mother's Day to, again, all of you. For those of you that are online watching us today want to honor the Lord for every mother and I want to celebrate yesterday I had an amazing opportunity before I left Los Angeles yesterday I had an aunt my aunt Janie she turned 96 on tomorrow and we celebrated Aunt Janie on yesterday and uh, it got me excited Aunt Janie said well do I need to put my teeth in and do I need to get it all together I, she said you know I'm on Facebook now I said all right mother all right all right and so she said, it's all right, it's all right. I'm 96. They can get it with no teeth. Praise the Lord. And so I thank God, Mother, I, Janie, I love you on today, and I celebrate you. I want to thank God. There are many of us who are here today, and our mommies have gone on to be with the Lord. And so I want to take a moment, and I want to honor those moms that have gone on to be with the Lord. So if your mommy has gone on to be with the Lord, will you just lift your right hand to heaven? Amen. And we'll just take a moment as we think about the life and the legacy, for she still lives within all of us and with you. And so today we honor the, our mommy and we thank God for her that even though she's in heaven and she's gone on to be with the Lord, we still honor her life and her legacy. Will you say her name and tell her that you love her? Go ahead. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let's celebrate her life and her legacy. Amen. That's it. 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 My grandmamas have gone on to be with the Lord, but we honor their lives and we honor their legacy on today. So we give God praise. Well, there's a whole lot of great things that are happening in the life of Trinity Temple Church. And uh, we thank God. The restrooms, our main sanctuary restrooms are open. Amen. Come on. How many of you all can help me praise God? Our restrooms are, are open and they are moving. And uh, I want to thank God many of you all have already started to help make those pledges. And many of you all have paid those pledges and paying on those pledges. And so uh, I just believe, God, we have about a 15-month cycle right now. I don't want to do this for a long time. But we are in a remodeling campaign. And so I would that everyone would go online and be a part of the campaign. I need your help as we are going to pay off this restroom renovation. 
Uh, we still have some work that we need to do downstairs in our restrooms. And so there's still some work that needs to be done. God dropped it in my spirit. He said, you're in the Missouri state. You're in the show me state. He said, if you start, son, I'll finish. And he said, the people of God are going to make it happen. And so I'm asking all of the saints that would, if you would make a commitment, amen, to the Project Greater campaign, I really could use your support and your assistance in that particular area. And I believe it's going to be special. Well, this is Women's Month all month long long. The women of God are leading in ministry. Thank God for the women of God that led in prayer. Amen. We have another woman of God that will be leading in the benediction. And I thank God for women in ministry. Come on, help me praise God for all of the women of God that are in ministry here in the life of our church. We thank God they're leading. They had a great panel discussion on last week. So I want to celebrate all of the women of God and you're going to enjoy women and the women of God here at Trinity Temple all month long. So we celebrate them uh, on this month. Men, I need you to get ready for next month. Amen. Come on, let me hear brothers say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. The first Saturday in the month of June, I want to welcome every brother to join our deacon department, to join the men of Trinity Temple Church. We have a special uh, breakfast that's going to happen the first Saturday in the month of June. So I want every brother to get ready. We're going to have a great time. Uh, we're sowing into our scholarship ministry as well as we're sowing into the restroom renovation. And so we're asking every man to come and join the brothers the first Saturday in the month of June. If there's a brother here that cannot uh, afford it, there's a small fee, but if there's a brother that cannot afford it, when you go to the table today, let the brother know that you'd like to come. And I'd like to sponsor a brother on today or two, and there are many brothers that are sponsoring men, and so we want to make sure that that breakfast is going to be special. I saw the ladies yesterday doing Zumba. Amen. Y'all were doing Zumba yesterday. You all were getting your body together, getting your physical workout going on. I'm sweating just thinking about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I understand that the women of God had a good time. Well, men, we are going to do a 50-day holiness and health challenge. Amen. Holiness and health challenge. We're going to give a special award to the brother that loses the most weight and the brother that gets in shape for every man that would like to participate in the 50-day holiness and health challenge. I want you to email your name and your weight to men's ministry at trinitytemple.org. And at the end of the month, of course, we're going to do this. That every brother would be honest, but we're going to get a chance to do this for the next 50 days, starting in the morning, uh, for the next, because I know you all going to hit the buffet after church today, uh, but starting in the morning, for the next 50 days, we're going to do a holiness and health challenge. I'm challenging every man to jump on the prayer line with me in the morning at 6 a.m. for the next 50 days, Monday through Friday, from 6 to 6.30. We're going to have 30 minutes of worship. 30 minutes of workout, and we're going to have uh, water. So it's worship, workout, and water. We're asking brother to drink at least a half a gallon to a gallon of water every day, have a moment of worship every day, and have a moment of workout for at least 30 minutes every day. So for those brothers that would like to be a part of that challenge, email men's ministry at trinitytemple.org, and we'll get you engaged, and we're going to have a great time. So I know this is Women's Month, but men, we're getting ready for next month. Come on, let me have every brother give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We're excited about that. Well, it's offering time in the sanctuary. Come on, let's praise God for the ministry of giving. Hallelujah. Everything giving is living, and everything living is giving. We are blessed to be a blessing. Say that. I am blessed to be a blessing. I tell people everywhere that I go across the country that if you want to see a miracle, be a miracle. If you want to see blessings, be a blessing. Oftentimes we use it in a negative connotation that you reap what you sow. People often say that in a negative way. You're going to reap what you sow. But how many of you all know that if you sow good things, you'll reap good things. If you sow blessings, you will reap blessings. Well, even when it comes to our tithe and our offering and our financial giving, it is a way that we show God that we love him. So you don't give uh, begrudgingly, but you give out of love and out of relationship. So it's offering time in the sanctuary. Come on, let's praise God for the ministry of giving. I want everyone that can this morning, I want you to get a liberal seed. I want you to get a healthy seed. I want you to get a, a very lucrative seed on this morning. For those of you that are tithing this morning, I want you to prepare your tithe. I'm a tither. I'm tithing this morning. But for those of you that would, I would that you would get at least a $35 seed on this morning. And I want you to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. For those of you that are in the auditorium, this offering envelope will provide you an opportunity to use your debit card or your credit card. For those of you that would like to use uh, your cell 
cell phone today, you can give online. If you go to the trinitytemple.org website, there's a give button there on that website. If you push that give button, for those of you that are watching today, you can give right now online. Some of you all say, well, I'm going to give a little bit later after service. I'm still folding clothes or doing dishes. If you don't mind, I want you to pause and make God a priority this morning. Many of us come to church this morning and say, well, you know, I, I got a budget. Well, if God is not a part of your budget, then you have a problem. I tell people all the time that if tithing, amen, if you don't tithe your income, amen, then you have to know that you are challenging God's outcome. So what you put in, God says, I want to see, can I trust you? Amen. We don't give to get, but we give because God has been good. And so this morning, I want you to sow a seed this morning. For those of you that are on Cash App, it is the dollar sign, capital T, everything else lowercase, Trinity Temple, C-O-G-I-C. If you're on Givelify, it's Trinity Temple. If you're on Venmo, it is the at sign, Trinity-Temple, C-O-G-I-C. I want everyone to get a gift this morning. Bishop, I don't have $35, but I have $20. I'm going to give my best this morning. Amen. Don't let the buffet take God's blessing. Amen. We want us to be a blessing to the work of God. Let God know that you uh, have him on your mind. Let God know that he is priority in your life. Oftentimes we're asking God to pull us out of situations. God says, I will rebuke the devourer on your behalf when I know that you are in covenant with me. So our offering this morning is connected to covenant blessings. I would that everyone would get a tangible seed if you're writing a check. Make it out to Trinity Temple. For those of you that are mailing your seed, I honor the Lord for you. Mail that seed to 11922 Food Lane. That's Grandview, Missouri, 64030. I would that everyone would get that gift right now. Come on, get that gift right now. Everyone is standing all over the building. Everyone is standing. Hallelujah. Come on, put a smile on your face. I'm excited. Ladies, how many of you all know that every time when you birth children, you are giving an offering to the earth? If anybody knows anything about giving, it's ladies. Women know about giving. Brothers, if you don't believe me, just hand her your credit card and let her go shopping. If anybody knows about giving, ladies know about giving. If Amazon could testify, y'all not talking to me. I had a brother the other day, he was smiling because his wife was reporting on Instagram. She said, I got to find a way to turn that camera over the porch. I got to turn that camera off. She had three or four packages. He said, baby, where do these packages keep coming from? I don't know. God just keeps blessing me. He said, no, you keep pushing that Amazon button. So this morning, I don't want you to allow Amazon to take the priority of what you give to the Lord. This morning, come on, prepare that seed to sow it into fertile ground. Get your best offering this morning. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every gift and every giver. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to sow. Now, God, I pray, God, that as we sow into fertile ground, we believe, God, for an amazing harvest. I pray for the person that's on financial uh, despair situations right now. I pray for the person that just doesn't have it, God. They're, they're in financial transition. God, I pray for the person that's unemployed or the person that's going through some situations that they can't even talk about. I pray that you would meet their need. God, I pray for the person, oh God, that has been blessed, that you would open up their hearts and their minds, that they would give liberally. Move by your spirit, oh God, on today. And God, I thank you for blessing the women of God as they sow a special seed on Mother's Day. Because you have covered their seed, we sow seed. God, because you have been faithful in our lives, we give back unto your work. So move by your spirit, Father. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, let's praise God for the ministry of giving. Here at Trinity Temple, we say a statement of blessing. If you're fellowshipping with us for the first or second time, you may just want to listen to it, but I promise you the next time you'll want to say it with us. So we're going to say our statement of blessing. Come on, here we go. Ready? Begin. I am blessed and highly favored. I cannot be cursed. As a kingdom investor, through tithe and offering, I sow this seed, activating the word of God by faith over my life. God has canceled every assignment of debt and poverty, releasing the spirit of prosperity, positioning me for blessings that are pressed down, shaken together, that are what? Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. For those of you that are physically giving, you'll be able to give upon your exit. For those of you that have given electronically, the Lord bless you. This morning, we have a special gift that God has given Trinity Temple, our house poet, sister, Robin Lowe. She's going to come and bless the mothers on Mother's Day, and then we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Bless you.
Thank you, Jesus. I know what it's like to feel inadequate when it's you telling yourself that you're worthless. I know what it's like to cry, to constantly cry, to sit up and cry, lay down and cry, fall asleep crying, wake up crying. I know what it's like to be broken, a broken mother and a broken woman. Broken inside and confused inside. I, I was broken and parts of me are still broken. Heart broken, mind broken, just broken. I mean just broken. No feelings, but I was hurting. No emotions, I was just empty. It's a horrible feeling. Realizing that nobody wants me. I know what it's like when your life is absolutely not what you planned. And it's not that I failed to plan. Mothers, but that plan, it failed. I know what it's like when that knot forms in your throat, but you're too prideful to let go. I know what it's like to feel left behind when life is leaving you behind. I was the garnish left on the plate that had already been eaten. I was the crust from the pizza left on the plate that had already been eaten. I see everybody doing better than me with two and three college degrees, married and raising a family, a mortgage, retirement savings, and then there's me. A single mother, steady struggling and wondering and praying and asking God, when is it going to turn around for me? I know what it's like to feel you're not good enough, smart enough, mature enough, capable enough. Worthless is what I saw. Gullible is what I saw. Abandoned is how I felt. Violated is how I felt. I was raped and robbed of my sanity and I was molested right out of my destiny. I didn't know what I saw when I looked at me. I didn't know who I saw when I looked at me. That mirror was my enemy. That mirror was my enemy that mirror was my enemy I never liked what I seen my self-image issues ran deep when your parents are at the root of your insecurities your issues run deep I didn't see beauty when I looked at me I'm too big I'm too dark skinned I got way too much melanin I wish I had a lighter pigment my hair is natural you can't run your fingers through this I'm not dainty when I walk a little hood when I talk tattoos down both arms I am not soft I got seven brothers I am not soft I wasn't in the kitchen baking I was outside playing football this is me God I can't walk this off this is me God I can't take this off I didn't see beauty when I looked at me I didn't see anything worth keeping. Damaged goods is what I see. Lord, how can I be the mother you want me to be? Me, this broken vessel. Me, this double-minded and unstable vessel. Why would you want me? Who's going to listen to me? Why would anybody want to hear my story? Lord, I've desecrated your name and I'm so ashamed. And it's mainly because of the undivine choices that I've made. But even so, Lord, you kept pursuing me, my insecurities building, my self-esteem declining, but you still pursue me. I don't know why he loves me. I don't understand, God, why you keep upholding this young mother with your right hand. You've seen how I've been acting. You've seen what I've been doing. You've seen the sins I've been committing. You know my thoughts from afar off. You know my thoughts are a little off. Even though when I didn't like me, you held on to me. When I thought I was going crazy, God, you still kept me. It was his power that spared me. It was his mercy that kept me, and it was his grace that saved me. Oh. 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 Good job. Good job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing worth more 
that can ever come close. No thing can come back. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen such as purest of love when my heart we come free and my shame is undone. It's in your presence, Lord. Oh, oh. oh. For to be overcome by your presence, Lord. It's in your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. Let us be. 
become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your breath. Let us experience, experience the glory of your Let us become more aware of your Let us experience, experience your glory, Lord. Let us become yeah. Experience, experience, oh God, let us become, oh yeah, let us experience, oh God, oh God, oh God, let us become, yeah, let us experience, experience your glory. morning there's some people that have come in heavy while the while the spirit of the Lord is going Robin when Robin got up to minister I just felt the Holy Ghost shifting something in the atmosphere and I, I'm getting ready to minister in just a moment but I, I feel the power of God whatever you're going through this morning I want you to let him in so as the song was going forth Holy Spirit you are welcome how he knows it He's welcome is because now you step into a place that you graduate from praise to worship. Praise is the vehicle. Worship is the destination. When you get to the place of worship, that's when chains begin to fall off. That's when healing takes place. That's when deliverance takes place. So right now, I just, I just want you to step into this moment while your hands are lifted. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, I want you to open up your mouth and begin to tell him how much he means to you. Tell him how much you appreciate him. So, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome in my mind. You're welcome in my life. Whatever you have going on this morning, God is destroying every fetter, every chain, the mental block, the emotional block. Whatever's come to hinder you this morning, step into it. Come on, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Come on. Come flood this place. Flood this place. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for to be overcome. To be overcome. 
overcome. By your breath, One more time. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You are welcome you in this are room. Welcome. It's shaking up all seasons. In the name of Jesus. The Healing be loose in the name your of Jesus. Glory, Lord. Victory come in the name of Jesus. Emotional deliverance in the name of Jesus. Breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever you need this morning is in the room. And fill the Be free in your mind. Be free in your Be free this morning. Yes. To be overcome by your friends. Father, we thank you that you are the God that heals, delivers, and sets free. Thank you that you're the God that knows all, see all, and you have all. So now, God, as we move into this preaching moment, I pray for miracles. I pray for manifestations. I pray for deliverance. Let somebody cry out, what must they do to be saved? Thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy. Father, I pray this morning that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that it will be acceptable in thy sight for you alone are my strength and my redeemer. Thank you, Holy Ghost that you set an atmosphere today. And God, I thank you, God, that this is not an ordinary service, but this is a move of the Holy Ghost. This is our prayer today in Jesus' name. And we give him glory. Come on, give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, get your Bible. Let's go to work. Get your Bible, get your Bible, get your Bible. Open it up on the app. If not, turn to Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Uh huh. Uh huh. See, there's deliverance that's in this house. There's deliverance in this house. I know some of y'all not used to all of this. You say, listen, man, this is my once a year time. I, you know, I come once a year. I'll be back at, 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 at Christmas. I was here with you on Easter. You know, I only do this two or three times a year, but God said, I'm speaking to you today. There's a miracle with your name on it. God has a blessing for you. You're right in the middle of it. You're right in the middle of it. Uh-huh. What you feel is not just, uh, you know, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's moving. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bereavement is being broken right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bereavement is being broken right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Separation anxiety is being broken right now. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Nervous energy. I just hear what I hear in the Holy Ghost. Nervous energy. I can't be still. I can't sleep. Uh-uh. God says, I'm, 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 I'm healing. I'm destroying the chains of the enemy that's been sitting on you. You stand up all night and you can't eat and worried about this and worried about that. Uh-uh. God says, I'm putting your mind in perfect peace. I've shifted the gear that's in your, that's on your mind. God said, the enemy is coming against you and trying to sift you as wheat, but this morning I'm praying for you that your faith fell not. There's a glory that's in this place. There's a miracle that's in this place. God is shifting shifting in the atmosphere in this place in the name of Jesus 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 in the name that's above every name in the name that destroys in the name that sets free in the name that heals in the name of Jesus I should go by sea. I feel a Pentecostal move up in here. God is shifting something in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there's a healing that's moving. I'm not just talking about in the physical realm. There's a healing that's moving right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I hear restoration. God said, I'm restoring what the canker worm and the palmer worm, the caterpillar, Try to do. I'm restoring what mama said about you, what daddy said about you, what your ex-boyfriend tried to lie to you. I'm restoring when you didn't get hired on the job and you thought that you were inadequate and less than and so far. God said, I'm restoring. There's a deliverance that's in this house. 
You've still been carrying from the mistakes that you made. He says, but I'm turning your mistakes into ministry. Yay! I'm turning your mistakes into your ministry. I'm going to show you how to get up so people can get up. I'm going to show you how to come out so people can come out. God said, yes, you messed up, but look at you today. I'm restoring. Somebody say, he's restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. I'm restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. That means he's filling you back up again. Woman of God, he's filling you back. He's filling you. Man of God, he's filling you. Some of y'all are depleted. Some of y'all are empty. Some of you giving all that you can give. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. I ain't got no more love. I don't have nothing else to give. He said, I'm, I wish you would tell somebody he's restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. He's restoring. God is restoring you. He's restoring you. God said, I'm giving you your joy back. Some of y'all ain't laughed all year. Some of y'all ain't smiled all year. He said, I'm giving you your smile back. I'm giving you your peace back. I'm giving you your joy back. I'm giving you your power back. God said, I'm turning it around. What the devil meant for evil, God said, I'm setting it up for my good. He said, I'm working it out. I'm bringing you through. I'm restoring. Woo! I'm restoring. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. God is restoring you. Let the tears fall in your living room. God said, I'm restoring you. You didn't think you was going to make it here. You thought you were going to break. God said, you're not breaking down. You're breaking through. I'm restoring you. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. Ho, 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 ho. See, I can't shout yet. He's restoring you. I don't want to emotionalize you. He's restoring you. I don't want you to dance on this just yet. We do need to do that. But I, I, I need you to recognize he's restoring you. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to fall apart. He's restoring you. I don't have time to preach it. When you get to the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, you're going to see that in that story, there's going to be a conversation. The mother, her name is Naomi. Naomi had a husband that died. She had two sons that died. Before the two sons died, they had two daughters, two wives. The two young ladies become daughters to Naomi. Naomi's going to have a conversation with the two girls and say, I'm old, baby. Y'all go on back to your mama's house. I ain't your mama, so go back to your mama's house. And, 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 and y'all start your lives all over again. Orpah, she said, all right, mama. Mother-in-law, I love you. I got to go. I'm going back. It's been real. The Bible said that the girls huddle up, cry. She kissed them both, which is a sign of blessing. 
they move on. Naomi and Ruth were standing there looking at each other. My husband dead. Your husband dead. What we got? We two widows. They decided that restoration was going to come because I refused to be a wounded widow. They decided to win. See, because you got to know that death can't break you. It disappoints you, but it can't destroy you. Somebody put it down on Facebook or Instagram for me. Death will disappoint you, but you don't allow death to destroy you because we don't weep as those that have no hope. She could have given up. She could have given in. She said, well, what you going to do, girl? Ruth said, uh-uh, mama, I ain't going back. I got a biological mama, but, but you my mama now, not according to birth, but according to blessing. God said, I'm getting ready to turn some stuff. It's not biological, but it's spiritual. Just look at somebody say, it's spiritual, it's spiritual. So that was my point. God is restoring you, woman of God. Because some of the people that were biologically connected to you tried to break you. But God says, I'm going to be intentional in this next season that your connection is not biological, it's spiritual. Yeah. She said, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? She said, let's go back to my neighborhood. Because now I need to get you a husband. The Bible talks about in Ruth chapter 3, she says, I need to get you to safety. Safety means security. But really now when you break it down in the Hebrew, it means now I need to give you a place that's going to be stable. I need to give you a place because wherever men are, there's stability. I'll preach to brothers next month. But don't let the enemy fool you because the world is trying to desensitize men. I'll get to that next week. Every great man understands who he is. Every king needs a queen. And every queen understands I'm not trying to be the king. I'm enjoying being the queen. So she said, what I need to do, girl? She said, I'm old. I can't have no more babies. I don't want no more babies. I don't want no more husbands. Because I don't want to do what wives do no way, so I'm good. I'm going to live my life through you. So what I'm going to do, girl, I'm going to take you back and I'm going to show you. So what she does is she goes back and she teaches her how to position herself to win. This morning, God says, I'm positioning you to prosper. That's why I'm restoring you. I know you're broken. I know you got some issues. I know you feel inadequate, but I am positioning you. This morning, there's a woman that came into this building today. God says, I am positioning you to prosper. You got a whole lot of reasons to quit. You got a reason to give up. But I'm positioning you. I put a Naomi in your life to give you what you need. Today, the Naomi is the Holy Ghost. So what did she tell her to do? She said, now listen, if you stick with me, I'll teach you. She says, is this what you're getting ready to do? That's what you get ready to do. Y'all can sit down if you want to. If you stand, stand all right. I got about four minutes. I'm done. She said, this is what we're getting ready to do, girl. She said, what I'm going to do, y'all read it when you get home. What I'm getting ready to do is we're going back to my hometown, and I need to get you a husband. I need to hook you up because there's a future in you. You're not done yet. Just because you lost yesterday don't mean that you won't win tomorrow. God says, I'm positioning you to prosper. Every woman up in here, just because he walked away, don't mean that you garbage. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Just because the devil didn't know how to handle you, don't mean that God ain't got a blessing with your name on it. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Just because that fool couldn't see favor. What you mad at? That fool couldn't see favor. He wasn't going to know how to hold you right anyway. He couldn't recognize the glory that was on your life. She says, so this is what we're getting ready to do. This is what we're getting ready to do. She said, what I want you to do, I want you to get ready for Boaz. Did you get ready for Boaz? Uh -uh. We don't want to shake nothing fast. Don't drop nothing. Don't tweak this and don't twerk this. You're just going to walk it. You're going to walk it. You're going to walk it. You're going to walk it. She said, this afternoon, in the evening, he's going to be in the field. 
He's going to be in the threshing floor. The threshing floor is the place where they would produce wheat or they would produce grain. But you got to know, preachers, that the threshing floor in this text is not about wheat and grain. The threshing floor in this text is about sanctification and the separation between what is good and what's worthless. It's to separate the wheat from the chaff. So he's down at the threshing floor separating good stuff from bad stuff. So I want you to go down to the threshing floor so he can see the hoochie, I'm, I'm sorry, so he can see the hood rat, I'm sorry, so he can see the chicken hip, I, I'm sorry. I want you to go down to the threshing floor. Because I need him to see the difference between quantity and quality. I need him to know the difference between a cubic zirconian and a diamond. So what I'm going to do, I want you to go down in the evening. Don't go in the day. I want you to go down in the evening. When most of the girls didn't already shot, they're shot. Y'all ain't talking to me. Well, most of the girls are already. I want you to go in the afternoon when everything didn't already pass by. And when you get there, what I want you to do before you go, my sermon title was The Advice of a Mother. She said, what I want you to do is before you go, I want you to bathe. You bathe because you got to be clean in this next season. God told me to tell the women of God that came in here this morning, I want you to be clean. And I'm not just talking about bath and body works. He says, I want you to clean your mind because if you still got a messed up head, you'll still have messed up hands. If you can't see it, you'll never get it. Because half the stuff we say is what we think. That's why you got to speak those things that are pure clean and of a good report. You got to speak yourself to where you are crying, trying to go where you want to be. She says, so I want you to bathe and then I want you to anoint yourself. Now that's lotion, but that's also fragrance. Because to know a man, you understand that we are sensory driven. You ladies are emotional, more mental. Men are hand-eye physical. It is the smell. It is the taste. It is the touch. It is the tantalizing moment as you walk in a room and we understand that grace and mercy has followed you all the days of your life. Brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about when you, she walk in the room and be like, my God, with the apostrophe D, like my God. Some of y'all got some anointing. And your gift made room for you. <laughs> so the Bible says she comes down. She's bathed herself. She's anointed herself. Because the anointing is what makes the difference. In this season, you've been through so much hell. God says, I'm positioning you with an anointing that destroys every yoke and breaks every chain. There's some stuff that you did out of stupidity in the last season because as you'll be intentional in this season the Bible says that she comes to the threshing floor the Bible says that she stays in position she holds her peace the Bible says that he's going to ask her a question who are you I'm challenged because I'm in a generation of women that don't know Who, who, who are you? But God told me to whisper in your ear that you are blessed and highly favored. Your name is favor. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your name is wonderful. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are peculiar. You've been touched by the best. You are the masterpiece that God has ordained and called for such a time as this. You are prophetess. You are a queen on assignment. 
You have been positioned and prompted for such a time as this. There's a word that's on your lips. It is not your lip gloss that keeps your lips popping. But every time you open up your mouth, there's a prophetic utterance that comes out of you. Your footsteps are ordered by the Lord. It's not your petty and your manny that makes you who you are. There's an anointing that's on your life. So as she stands in his presence, she tells him who she is. I am Ruth. I am God's woman. I've got some challenges. I've gotten some issues. I've been hurt. I've been challenged, but I'm still standing. Because great women still stand. Having done all to stand, we stand. The man of God was so amazing, the Bible says. She stays there. She uncovers his feet. Now, please get it. This was a sign of understanding his role and his position. This was not erotic. There was nothing in it that was sexual. It was intentional because she was positioned for purpose. She gave her intention as she had his attention. Women give your intention and you'll command a man's attention. Never forget, ladies and girls, that men are like lions. The lion is the king of the jungle. He can destroy anything. He can have almost everything. So for men as lions, it's not the kill, it's the chase. The lamb never comes up and says, Mr. Lion, here's my neck. The lion yeah, and goes back to sleep. But it's the cheetah in the bush. You better quit lying down and you keep. The Bible says because she has his attention, he gives her intention, attention. I close the text with this. When he gets ready to let her go, he says, I cannot let you leave here empty handed. I got to bless you. It's not that you touched me naturally, but you've done something to me mentally. See, girls and ladies, it's not when he talks to you. It's when he talks about you. And it's not what he says to his boys. It's what he says to his mama. When you have his attention, he will not brag about you to his voice, but he will boast about you to his mama. The Bible says that he tells her, here, take this and go back to Naomi and tell her, you have my attention. God told me to tell every woman in this house, that because of your worship, you have his attention. God says, I'm healing you this morning because you have my attention. I'm anointing you this morning because you have my attention. And if you go to the end of this text, when you get down to verse 16 and verse 17 and verse 18, when she finally gets back to her mother-in-law, she does not ask, what did he do to you? He asked, she asked, what did he do for you? Real woman understands that it's not what a man does to you. It's what a man does for you. Because it takes two minutes to do something. That don't mean nothing. That ain't nothing. It's something. I'm sorry. It's something. It's 
It's not what he does to you. But it's what he does for you. Because when you get a man to do for you, you invite him to come. She's healed. She's delivered. She's set free. Naomi tells her, Read the text, ladies, when you get home. She said, now listen, now that you've left that threshing, threshing floor, don't you say another word. Don't you bother that man. You've shared your intention, and if you really have his attention, he'll come looking for you. This morning, God has come looking for you. You all know how the end of the story. She's going to connect with Boaz, but she's had some advice from her mother. This morning, God is giving some spiritual advice that God says, I'm healing and I'm making whole. I want every woman to stand on your feet and lift your hands. Ah, there's a glory in this house. There's a power in this house. God says, I'm filling you. God says, I'm blessing you. I'm restoring you. While your hands are lifted up, if the tears fall, it's okay. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. He told me just now. He said, tell them they were built to not break. <laughs> yeah, you were built to not break. God says, I'm healing you right now. Wherever that place is that has been destroyed and trampled on, has been stepped on, God says, your value and your virtue still remains. God says, I want you to know, woman of God, that you are loved. My daughter, my child, I've crafted you and I've constructed you to be who you've been called to be. And no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up in judgment shall be condemned. I cast down every stronghold. I pull down anything that's not like Almighty God. And I sow into your life the glory of Almighty God. God give you everything that you need. God give you what you've been called to do. God move into you in this season. And I need you to say I receive it. Now praise him for it. Praise him for your healing. Praise him for your victory. Praise him for your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. I am the queen in God's kingdom. Somebody ought to begin to rejoice and give God praise. I'm coming through with victory. I'm coming out with power. I'm coming out with joy. I'm coming out with my deliverance. I wish you would go in five of these three sisters and tell them, come on, we going to the next level. Come on, brother, stand on your feet, clap your hands. I gotta quit. Going to the next level. Oh, glory. I wish somebody would help her. She's been shouting all service. Somebody ought to praise God with that sister getting her breakthrough. Somebody ought to bless him. Oh, glory. I'm coming through here. If you can't dance, you can clap your hands.
glory, glory. I see you dancing in the kitchen. Come on, Dr. Foreman. I dare you to give him some glory. Come on, bless God in this place. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on and give him glory. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There may be somebody here this morning that does not know Jesus. There may be somebody that's not in covenant. You can stand with me. It's okay. I'm done. There may be somebody that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord. If you're here this morning, you came to church. This was not just an average Mother's Day. I couldn't even get into my book, into my sermon like I wanted to. But I think you got some of my points. Did y'all get what I was trying to say this morning? All right. Go home and read Ruth chapter 1, 2, and 3. And you'll be like, oh, that's what he meant. Ruth was a tough sister. She had a good mother. Can I encourage every spiritual mommy in this house? You may not have birthed biological children, but if you are a spiritual mother, I want to encourage every spiritual mother to stay on the wall. These children, these young ladies need your guidance, your wisdom, your direction. Y'all got to help me, moms. This generation, it's a brilliant generation now technological generation I don't mean no shade to my Gen Z's I mean no shade but I gotta say it the way it is Bible says in the last days the enemy's gonna shelter and cover the eyes of this generation Bible tells us that the generations become wiser technologically but they become weaker emotionally how many of y'all remember big mama Medea she didn't have to say nothing to you she look at you what's wrong with you Mama had them bosoms. She said, I know we got this new generation. They want to be cool with it. And 60 years old, still wearing five-inch stiletto. That's right. I need grandmamas that still making oatmeal. Right. <laughs> They're still watching the news. Y'all like Netflix. I'm watching. I'm binge watching. None of, going back to news, mama. Right. Too old for all that stuff. That's right. But I pray. I'm teasing y'all, y'all. But I pray for grandmamas and big mamas that before these babies commit suicide, open your arms. Yeah. For these girls, quit. Y'all really know bullying. Especially my baby boomers that came out of racism and those seasons. Y'all really know bullying and challenging moments. I need grandmamas to open up their arms. Before you start preaching to them about Jesus, don't get me wrong, tell them about Jesus, but just say, Mama, love you. Come here, come here, come here. We've been snotted all over Mama's little nighty. You know, she wasn't putting in them little nighties, little moo moo gowns. I need y'all to go back to doing that. There may be somebody here today, Jesus' arms is open just like Big Mama. There may be somebody today, if you don't know Jesus, where every head is bowed. If you know that you need a relationship with Jesus, I want you to lift your hand right at your seat. Lift your hand right at your seat. I see those hands. There's somebody else. You grew up in church. Mama kept you in church, but you veered off. I want you to lift your hand. Come on. This is your day to get it right. And some more of you need to lift your hands. You know that you have not been living the life that you were raised to live. I see that hand. There's somebody else. You need to lift your hand this morning. Miracles, manifestations. I see that hand, my sister. There are about three or four more ladies. I'm waiting on you. Lift that hand. There's somebody you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. 
You know better. You know better. To know better is to do better. If that's you, come on, lift that hand, lift that hand, lift that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every hand that's been lifted. I pray that you would renew, restore. I pray that you would refurbish. I pray that you would empower these women of God. God, I thank you, O oh God, that you're the God of more than enough. I thank you that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. I pray, O oh God, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Move by your spirit. Get the glory, get the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord, forgive me of all of my sins and the wrong that I've done. I accept Jesus Christ as Lord who died for me, was buried for me, rose again for me, that I might have life and that more abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for changing my life. And I am saved. And I will serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody ought to holler, I'm saved now. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. For those of you that want to join the church, I want you to send me a quick email. Send me a quick email to info at trinitytemple.org. Send me a quick email to info at trinitytemple.org. The doors of the church are open. How many people are blessed by the word on today? Hallelujah. We're getting ready to bless three children. Well, God has done it again. The word, the worship has been amazing. Souls have been changed. Lives have been saved. And God does always come through. Today, I pray that mothers, ladies, I pray that you have an amazing day. I pray that you'll be with us on Winning Wednesdays. And I pray that you would have a wonderful day of celebration. Let God continue to have his way. Have an amazing week. Until we meet again, my friends, be blessed.